We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Our guest this morning is Beverly Watts, Executive Director of the Tennessee Human Rights Commission. Fascinating about how they go about, and they've been doing this for years, since 1963, investigating cases of discrimination, be it uh, in the workplace, I guess, uh, place of where you live, all of these types of things. Complaints can be filed, and you said over up to 400 cases a year? Well, we have about 400 every year in our inventory. Meaning, yeah, some carry and over we, from the year before. And some carry over, and we close about two. Sometimes we close as many as 200, sometimes a little bit higher than that, depending on the years past. Busy, busy. Let's take mm -hmm. a quick call from Claudia waiting okay. through the break, and we'll continue our conversation. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Claudia. What's on your mind? Yes, hi. Good morning. Uh, I just have a quick question. Is this something that uh, has, like, a time limit? Like, I was fired about two years ago, but I did not know about this, uh, <laughs> you know, this commission. Is, is there a time limit? to, you know, seek for help or services? It's a good question. Statute of limitations. Statute of limitations is 180 days under the Tennessee Human Rights wow, Act. Wow, I'm glad it, she asked that. Unless it's continuing, and the EEOC is 300 days. So if it comes to us and it's day 181, we'll send it to the EEOC if they have 15 employees or more. And we will do that intake for them and send it to them. But it's 300 days under federal law and 180 under state law. Okay, so yeah, you've got to mm -hmm. move on it right. at some point quickly mm -hmm. there. And let's take a call next from Ray. Ray, good morning. Hi, Ray. Yeah, does it cost anything to file one of those complaints, or do you have to have a lawyer uh, to bring with you to do that, or can just an individual file a complaint without it costing them any money? Thank you. There's no cost to file with us as a state agency, and that really is kind of why this EEOC, there's no cost, there's no cost for us, no cost mm -hmm. for agencies across the country. So people can come into our office, they can call our 800 number, or they can go online and file a complaint. And then we'll determine, is it timely? Is it one of the allegations that we cover? And then there is no charge. Our investigator will talk back and forth with the individual. We are not their agent, we are the agent of the law. And so sometimes people think we're their lawyers if we mm -hmm. get to that point, we're not. Some people do come in with lawyers occasionally and file cases because lawyers will say this is a great case and they want us to do the work and they may at some point then withdraw and take it into court which they have a right to do. Meaning after you do the investigation mm -hmm. they'll yes. do that and sue. Uh, and, a and some lawyers do that well and then mm. some lawyers well and some complaining parties and lawyers after the fact get together all okay. right so usually respondents or companies housing providers depending on how large they are will come in with their attorneys because their attorneys tend to answer their response to us I got you mm -hmm. so it doesn't cost anything but if you think about filing a complaint what do you need when you make the call or you go to the website to fill out the mm -hmm. form? I mean, I'm just, I assume it has to be more than just he said, she said. I mean, or just, I guess you're going to say what you experienced, mm -hmm. but you know, what, what do you have to provide to help with the investigation? What they have to do is tell us what happened to them, okay. the dates they happened, and if there are more dates, as many dates as possible in the complaint when they file it. Uh, what are the allegations? I'm over 50 and they fail to provide me appropriate training so I can get promotions. Up until 45, I got all the training I needed and then at 50 it stopped. Well, we'll look at that and we'll talk, we'll talk about that. The company name, where the company is located, how many employees they have, because eight or more is critical. If it has more than eight employees, say they have 25, we'll mm -hmm. look at that. And 25 might not even still be the number. We always will verify those. Why is, why is the number important then? The number is say? important because the statute says under Tennessee law, an employee must have eight or more employees for us to review. Oh, okay, and, I see. And so if, they, if, it's, if it's a small business, just three people, right. if it's, if it's three people, you can't. Yes, the only exception <coughs> is retaliation. And they may say, I've worked at this company. I reported a sexual harassment claim there are five of us in the office, and after I reported the claim, they fired me. Mm -hmm. That claim we could take because it's retaliation. And they said, I believe it was because I originally filed a sexual harassment claim against the owner of the company. Wow. 
Okay. And that's because retaliation only needs one employee in place for us to take that claim. It's it's sort of unique in the entire spectrum of the work we do. Interesting. And just mm -hmm. you mentioning sexual discrimination, I think about the Me Too movement mm -hmm. and, and, and how that's grown. And I wonder how maybe it's affected what you've done in terms of those complaints. Because we talk about filing them. And it does take, I think, a, a good deal of courage sometimes mm -hmm. to just step forward and do that on right. a lot of fronts. As we've seen in some of these high-profile Me Too cases. Has, has that movement and, and the awareness that more women have come forward to talk about inappropriate conduct had an influence on the number of cases you've received in that realm? We've seen a slight increase. The EEOC has documented, documented their increase at a higher rate than mm. ours. Okay. okay, so there have been increases, not just in our office, but across in Tennessee at the EEOC and across the country. And depending on where it is, there are peaks and valleys some places, so yes. You know, it's interesting. I talk about what maybe employers can do to um, address this, to mm -hmm. keep these complaints mm -hmm. from happening. I mean, it could be sometimes where it's endemic from the top down, but a lot of times, sometimes the mm -hmm. top's up here, and there's some underneath here manager that's right. doing something inappropriate, mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily know. I, I can speak for scripts anyway, where we work here at mm -hmm. News Channel 5. I'd say almost on uh, every couple of months or so, we'll have some type of diversity training, mm -hmm. or there will be some type of video that is sent that we're all supposed mm -hmm. to review and take quizzes on, on how you treat people right, mm -hmm. fairly, what's, you know. That kind of training, and, and I, I view it from Scripps' perspective, and I think other businesses' perspective. One, I think they truly want us to behave properly, and hopefully mm -hmm. we do, and we know what's right mm -hmm. and wrong. But does that also provide a business some protection should something happen with one of their employees at a lower level that maybe, you know, hey, this guy did something and we're upset with it, but he did something wrong. If it ever comes to you, do you look at that? It doesn't forgive the, the mm -hmm. act of that employee, right. but at least you can say this is a company that's been trying because look at all that they've done to this mm -hmm. point. I don't know if it affects you or maybe that could play out later in a court of law if they get sued. Well, we look at that kind of information as well. So, we'll look at that. I mean, I'm sure, we, I assume you encourage companies to do that kind of we thing. We do because at some point companies need to have policies mm -hmm. that are do. fair and equitable. They need to train employees about what they what their responsibilities are under the law mm -hmm. and whether they're managers or whether they're employees because sexual <laughs> harassment and others covers employee. It also covers those people who come in and fix copy machines, mm -hmm. bring you water, anything that can be delivered is covered under the sexual harassment claim. So employers are responsible for knowing and eliminating situations that would be hostile mm -hmm. and cause concerns for their employees. So they're responsible for that. And so we'll look at what they're doing. So if they're doing training, they're doing other things. It doesn't mean it will eliminate complaints, but it does mean that if you've done all those things, if you have, have trained people, if you have looked at them and you have told them what they are doing that is wrong and you've warned them and they continue, mm -hmm. or they've done something so severe that they know they're wrong and you fire them, and even if they come to us, we're going to look at that and see what happens. And like again, we're going to look at what happens to anybody who comes. Mm -hmm. And if you have a policy that says these things will not be tolerated, these things are severe, racial harassment, sexual harassment, religious harassment will not be tolerated in our environment. And if it does, it could be cause for discipline up to and including firing and most policies read that way so you might you might give people mm -hmm. you know a pass the first time you might not you might suspend them you can and you can do those things and when we see that there's progressive discipline going on we do this we do a lot of training with employers no, about okay. the cases we see and how in the law if we see this it would be a problem I train human resource professionals and others in our staff we train lawyers we just have a, had a big employment law seminar where we looked at recent case law and the issues in this arena uh, we train supervisors if they want to. I, we, we train the general public mm -hmm. on if they see it, what it looks like. And in, sometimes in a general public audience, I'll have employees who think they've been treated wrong. I'll have human resources sure. people or supervisors <laughs> trying to get advice of what they can do to avoid complaints. Right. And so we do a lot of that. If people hear bias in the workplace, if they hear of rumors, the water cool, the proverbial water cooler, which mm -hmm. no longer exists, but people standing around talking about things, that's an issue. After Charlottesville, 
we know that there were a number of instances and we got requests for training from a number of companies that said we want you to come in and talk about the law because we've got issues going on mm -hmm. and people talking and saying yeah. things that we don't think is appropriate. Yep. And so they asked us to come. We came to talk about the law and the liabilities because on some levels it's the liability of the company and perhaps the employee as well. So yeah, after Charlottesville, what are you saying happened? Well, like, well, ha the hate crimes issues and people were making their comments. Oh, they were no. making comments about and, it in and, the workplace. In the workplace, in the workplace itself, and some people were supportive of the Charlottesville incidents, and oh, okay. some people were. In other words, we got so the pro and the con debates in there, exactly, and which caused some concern for the employer mm. and got out of hand. So that was that's one I example, see. and it didn't didn't cause a fight, but it just got out of hand because that was more people were paying more attention to that than work. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to say, come on in and talk with us about what we need to do and how we can do this. And so I said, you know, and then we do things where we go in and train people on getting to know each other in the workplace, understanding the differences mm -hmm. that exist, and sharing Yeah. In, 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 a, in a protected environment, one that's not hostile. All that stuff's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, and those are the kind of things that employers can do. Yeah. Man, I, and, and employees are not, sometimes are not in companies that are as progressive as some others, so they have the right, if they think there are issues, to come to us and file cases. And our job is to do a fair and impartial review to determine if their allegations are true. Sometimes people treat everybody wrong in companies, and that's something we have to tell people. So sometimes it's just a, just a toxic environment. Mm -hmm. And in the toxic environments, we find out that everybody was treated the same. They were all treated badly. badly. However, there was nothing we could discern that was based on race, color, national origin, that everybody, regardless, was just treated Oh, yeah, there's badly. just some mean bosses right. out there. Now, and that's a different ballgame. Yeah, and, and there's some liabilities in that, but we could we could not take that under under the uh, Tennessee Human Rights Act. So mm -hmm. Gotcha. All right, let's go to Diana. Mm -hmm. Diana, good morning. Hi, Diana. Hello. Hey, go ahead. I have a question. Is it true that in 1995, Washington, or our elected officials, established a hush fund um, and funded to pay claims against sexual harassment. Uh, I think there is something probably in the Washington Post about those. I have no knowledge mm -hmm. of that. Uh, um, at one time, at one point in time, Congress was exempt mm. from the laws. I do know that. Which was so, look, you've mm -hmm. been up to D.C., right? Mm -hmm. you I've around actually worked in D.C. So did I. Yeah, yeah, I worked for a congressman, and the congressman mm -hmm. I worked for was a good man. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry, and I think maybe it's changed. It's been mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. But that place is rife with bad stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Sexual harassment mm -hmm. like there's no tomorrow. Right. Oh, the, the, I, and, uh, uh, and I, I guarantee you she's right that some kind of, there was. Mm -hmm. The crap some of those lawmakers pulled with some mm -hmm. of these young female staffers mm -hmm. that, you know, look up to them and adore them. These are elected officials. Mm -hmm. And the crap those guys could get away with. Well, we don't have to go far. No, no. <laughs> well, of course. I, we were just talking about D.C. there, but we know what's happening just across the street right, here. I mean, and there have been a couple of public cases here in, in at least one public case where they expelled expelled the representative but some of these things happen but one thing that started to occur even in those even in the even in the legislative and governmental and and whether it's congress or state they start putting into place issues to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more transparent than others, depending on where you are in the country, but we do know that some things have been going on in Tennessee and they've started training and some other things and you know, I think the judgment on that is left to individuals to determine whether it's adequate enough 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 to do that. We tell employers that it's ongoing training and it's sufficient to make sure that your supervisors and managers have training and understand what they need to do and their responsibility, that employees understand their rights and their responsibilities. And so it's not a one-time deal. It's not just once gotcha. a year. It's an ongoing kind of thing. And it's done at a variety of levels. Uh, if there are unions in the operation, we encourage unions to do that as well, depending on what it is and where they are. We encourage unions to also have it, and a number of them have their own civil rights committees, which help to do training with management. So that those are things, and we work with them on that as well. Take a break on that note. We will come back. Our final segment, if you have a question or comment, 737-7587. For Beverly Watts, we'll be right back. Trailer